welcome back. I'm glad that you can join me. So this is going to be the last section in chapter 7. And today we're going to be covering yeoman. And while the subject here says NPM, Bower, and yeoman, and we didn't talk much about Bower, you'll see why. We're going to be using Bower. We really don't have to send a section, a whole section learning about Bower. We already spend, um, been spending our time with NPM and the uh, package that JSON file that it creates to manage our dependencies. And we've been using, using that package at JSON file to manage our backend dependencies, but it's actually nothing wrong with using that to also manage our front-end dependencies. Front-end dependencies would be like AngularJS, jQuery, Bootstrap, and a whole bunch of other ones that you're going to use for make your front-end. And back-end are just the things that you're going to use on the server, like Express, for example, is one example of a back-end or something that connects to that database or right to the local file system, like the JSON file package that we start off with this chapter with. So because Bower is a node application anyway, and Bower, the usage of Bower looks very much like NPM in terms of install, remove, and so on, I, I decided not to spend any time on it. And you're just going to learn it by seeing it being used. And Yeoman is what I'm going to install today. And Yeoman is what you use for scaffolding your application. Here when I say scaffolding, I really, really mean like creating structure and generating boilerplate code other code that you don't want to keep typing over and over, and we're going to see that. So, let's get started. So, the code is in a repository as usual, so you can find it there. But, what are our objectives for this section? We're going to try and figure out what Yeoman is, and we're basically going to look at the Yeoman website, grab their description of what the project is, and some of the use cases, and we'll go over that. Then we're going to see how to install Yeoman, and then we're going to, of course, use it. So that's basically the layout in this um, section. I'll go over it first, what I want to do with slides, and then I'll, with, and pictures, then I'll actually do a video showing you the whole process. So sit tight and let's do this. So what is Yeoman? So from the Yeoman website, it says Yeoman is a generic scaffolding system allowing the creation of any kind of, rep app, any kind of application. So that generic scaffolding is what allows it to create any kind of application. And it allows for rapidly getting started a new project. Um, so if you want to start a new project, if you know about Yeoman, which you will at the end of this video, you're going to see how you can get started quickly in that project by not having to write a ton of the boilerplate code that you normally have to write. And that would be in, index an HTML file, creating directories, creating the Bower file or the package.json file, a whole bunch of other things that we had to do before you're going to see it. So when we use a scaffolding system like Yeoman, we can skip a lot of that stuff. I was telling you that it's language agnostic. Basically, it can be used for anything. We, we don't really care, um, but once it generates our application. And the key thing here is that Yeoman by itself doesn't make any decision. Well, let's just say Yeoman by itself doesn't really do anything for you until you install a generator. And so there are literally thousands of generators. I think there's something close to like 40,000 or 4,000 of them. And so 4,000, not 40,000. And so you can enjoy and install a generator that you appropriate for you. And then you can just start using it. This is going to make sense. A generator is going to make sense in a few minutes. It's almost like a plugin. We're going to install the web app generator that um, is pretty simple to use and use that as our getting started place. Said that how Yeoman is a scaffolding system and you can use it to generate application and it can help you with the boilerplate code um, and repetitive typing and so on. As you'll, you'll see some of that just now. So there's some of the use cases. Again, help you rapidly create a new project, create new sections of your project. So for example, when we were doing our applicant Angular application or to-do list, one of the things that we had to do was create, you know, like new edit screen and new um, HTML file for edit, new, we had to create a controller for task, a controller for user. So, and those things look pretty much the same. If you remember from our last example we finished in Express, we saw that a lot of the functions look the same. So it would be nice if we could just have some way of saying, oh, all I want is task, a new task controller or endpoint, and then generated some of that stuff and wired up for us, and then we just go and modify it and put in what's different. Um, bootstrapping new services and creating new modules or packages. You can enforce standards and so on, coding guidelines and so on. 
And so because it can generate setting files, anything it can generate, any file or directory, basically a unit for your project, Yeoman can generate. And chances are somebody out there has written really good generators using patterns that they've discovered. And so we'll not be writing a generator. We'll simply be installing one and using it. So let's do that. Let's install a generator. Like I said, there are thousands of generators. So the one I picked to choose the one I chose to show you um, is just the one I, I chose. That's it. You're free to go experiment, research, or find one that suits you and your coding style and standards or whatever. But it, this, if you don't know about Yeoman, this is a good one to start with. So first of all, we need to install Yeoman itself. And Yeoman, when you, once you install it, basically the command for that is just Yeo. And so you're going to install Yeoman by just typing npm install minus g for global and yo and that makes it a command that you're going to be able to access anywhere you only need to do this once you don't need to do this per project once you install yeoman you can install some generators and again these are going to be global because while you're going to use the generator for multiple projects you only need to actually install it once and so you install human generator always have this naming convention generator dash and the name of the generator so in this case, we want to install the web app generator. So we're going to say npm install minus g generator dash web app. Now, here's a tip. If you want information about any generator that you install for whatever reason, um, you know, maybe you have it installed or you see the name somewhere. And so once you get it installed, this is how you can find information on it. Um, not even once you get it installed. This is how you can find information on it. Just type npm home space and then the, the package name and that'll take you to the website of any package that's installed by npm worst case if that doesn't work for you you can just type npm info package name and then grep for home page and then you should be able to see that information you just copy it from your, your command line and put it in a browser except the comma you don't want it, the ending comma and you're good you'll be able to go to the home page of that um, project that implemented uh, or created that package. So now we have Yeoman installed, we have to know to install it. Let's just do it and create a simple application. So in my command line here, you can see I'm in the directory for chapter 7, section 9, and I have a directory called example simple web, and there's nothing in it. And then I install Yeoman, and then I install the generator. And there's some other dependencies that we need. We mentioned we need Bower, which is just not a command line tool. And so we're going to do a global install of that too. And Grunt CLI. Grunt is like a task runner, or it is a task runner. And again, we're not going to spend too much time up describing it or whatever. You can look it up. But basically, we're going to see how to just use it in a very basic way. So I install that. Now, how do I know I need Grunt CLI and Bower? Well, when I went to the home page of the web, the generator, it told me, and so, and plus I knew, but different generators, some of them use Grunt, some of them use Gulp as their task runner, so you just have to look at the documentation. That's one reason why it's good to, you know, go to be able to visit that home page and it's going to tell you how to use that generator. Now we're the generator home page and we can scroll down and read it and it tells us exactly how to use the generator and eventually it says, well, you're going to be able to start the application and serve it by using Grunt Serve. And this does a number of things. It starts a live web server that serves up our application. It also starts up a browser sync and even open up our web application. So we're going to see that we're going to be able to use this generator and get this, look at, this great looking web application here in just about typing one command and entering twice see some of this in action so here I'm at my prompt and you can see it's the same you know current working directory for this section directory is empty um, I'm install I'm gonna install Yeoman and uh, generator I'm also going to install Grunt CLI and Bower and none of those things are going to change on any files in my current directory because they're all global commands next I'm going to go into my own direct, uh, project directory, not that I needed to for this next command, but I'm going to do npm home and the package name, which is in this case is generator-web. And it's going to load up a, in my web browser the home page of the web application generator. And that opened up off screen, so I'm just dragging it back on screen. But if you come here and you scroll down, um, 
you're going to see some of the features of this particular generator and it tells you how, exactly how to use it. So I'm not going to go through it because you can take a look at it. So now what we really want to do is actually use our generator we installed. So since we're in our project directory, we can go ahead and just invoke Yeoman and the name of the generator. We're going to accept the default. We see here you can press spacebar to deselect. So we're going to accept SAS, Bootstrap, and whatever else it's offering. Then the license, we're just going to press enter again. So we enter the, crit, enter the command, and then we just press enter twice. I will open another shell terminal here window so I can start up my editor and I'm using Visual Studio Code and I'm going to look at the files that's generated and you can see it's already generated a number of files. Remember I had no, no files whatsoever, zero files in this directory, zero files in directories and in my project directory is new project and now it created this app directory and yeah, with fonts and images and yeah, nothing in font, nothing in images but script there is a main.ts and then there's styles so you create a uh, main that's scss and that's a language for writing style sheets um, and so we don't care about that so we're going to close that um, the next thing though uh, we want to take a look at this main.java um, javascript file index.html a lot of content in here so this is a scaffolding what i was talking about it gives you not only structure but also a lot of boilerplate code that you would normally have to type and you can see because we selected on the first screen to use bootstrap we could have turned it off um, it included bootstrap library and just put out the dependencies there for us and it included our main.js file so that if we were to start right to say writing some angular code for example um, it would actually get included so we're going to see exactly what this look like when we run it and then before we modify it so now it's finished so if you remember it says that once you run your man and the generator you could then run gulp serve so we're going to type gulp serve and it's going to start up and it give us actually open the page for our application already and this is what it looked like um that's a whole lot of work uh, on the part of yeoman to give us this nice looking application and all we had to do was type yo space the generator name and press enter twice to accept it to false and notice how it resizes we can resize and it stays center and so on and since it's using bootstrap it looks great so um the other thing here is that there are two um, um urls that's provided one call local and one call and U ui external so for the ui so if we paste that in uh, we'll see that how oh, this is actually browser sync is running in the background and browser sync is responsible for keeping um, any browser we open to test this application in sync and so if we scroll all the way down we can see it says cover and correct connections and it says connected browsers will be listed here so I'm going to go open up a, another browser and you're going to see that how oh, this is going to get updated so I'm going to copy um, what the URL is and open another browser and go visit the same URL and the purpose of browser sync is since it's keeping all your browsers in sync anything you do in one browser shows up in the across all the browsers so you just perform the same actions actions on one browser and then it's mirrored on the other browsers now you may think well why would I want that so it's good for testing your application on multiple devices so if you were to pull this up on a mobile screen your phone for example have your application render there and as you keep playing with it on your phone you'd see what happens on you know like on your desktop or a tablet or vice versa as you mess, manipulate on the desktop or tablet you can see what it looks like on the phone and so uh, you can see here that I was scrolling just now and I started up another um, browser off screen and it showed up in the list there and so I'm gonna kill it and you should see that it goes away from the list at the bottom there um, but yeah, you can see here I'm scrolling and I scroll in one app and it scrolls in the other app. So that's pretty cool. Now let's do something more interesting. So now that we have a basic application already and it's running, let's anglify it. Before we start adding the Angular stuff, let's just resize our application and show that one of the nice benefits we have is that with our application running on the server and with browser sync, we actually don't even have to refresh our application like we had to do before. I can make changes here, for example, to the name of the application. And once it's saved, you'll see that it'll just automatically, well, 
is updated by itself once the file saves. So there's something that's running, checking out all the files, and when it detects that a file is saved, it uh, rebuilds the application and reloads them across all our browser. Again, if you had this on your mobile device, you would see the same thing. Now, one of the things that we saw as a feature of this generator, it says that, oh, if you use Bower to install your client dependencies, front-end dependencies, we'll insert them in your index.html file for you, so you don't have to do that. Well, thank you. Let's try it. Let's um, install um, the Angular client library. And so we're going to say Bower install, but let's just take a look and make sure that we can see this index.html file and see that it gets updated. Minus save, minus minus save, so we can save it to our borrow.json file. And notice you'll see it updated there. Uh, let's do Angular resource. And again, you'll see when we enter, it installs it and put it, and because it's downloaded to the borrow directory, borrow components directory, instead of node modules, you can see that how it updated it. And if we actually, if we were to open that bower.json file, we'll see that that's added as dependency. Now that Angular is installed, we can go create an Angular module. So let's do just that. So in our main, that JS file is already there for us. And remember that our uh, main JS is already included in index.html. We're gonna create an Angular module um, called my app. And then we're gonna create a controller called main controller. And we're going to, on the scope, we're going to attach um, a string, a message, and then we're also going to attach a function eventually. And then we're going to go try to use that on our index.html page and see if it works. And if we can get it working, then we know that, oh, hey, this is all done quickly by Yeoman, uh, being able to just add a few lines and get this much of our application going. So we see it all, we verify that script that main, that JS is included, and it is. And now we'll go up and declare that we have, this is an Angular application, and the name of the application is my app. Then we're gonna say that all, the body is under the control of our main controller, and so we do that. And so if that is the case, and this is actually working and wire up at Angular, we should be able to go here and print out our message that we put in our Angular controller. And so we're gonna use the interpolation form, which is basically you know, those curly braces to say, hey, read the message variable out of that controller, that main controller. And now we're gonna save it and go back here. And once this is saved and updated, there it is. It works. And then it, we should see the same thing in our other browsers also if you have multiple browsers and scroll and still work. So great, hooray, look at that. An Angular application in just a few clicks and type in a few um, lines of code. Look how much work has been done for us. Look at all the text that's been written. You're thinking that that was really, really easy. Well, yes, it really was. Um, and so if once we use this generator, we get an application that looks basically like this. And all we have to do is make some modification. To install Angular, we install Angular itself. And then if you need the resource for making backend call or whatever, you know, all the client side stuff that you need, do that. In our case, we install these two resources, um, Angular library itself, and then the resource module. And then we wrote our Angular module and controller. And then we wire it up to the front end by modifying the index of the HTML file to make sure that it know about our Angular module and the controller. So that's it for this section. And hopefully you don't, you don't, you don't feel underwhelmed, but rather excited about the possibility of Yeoman because we'll be using Yeoman in the next chapter. And what we're going to do is just spend time using Yeoman for the Angular generator that we want to use to help us write our application. So that's where we're going to spend more time with Yeoman. So don't be too dismayed that oh, we're ending this chapter. Or we're going to add one section on Yeoman. We'll be using Yeoman a whole lot more in the next chapter. So again, thanks for your time. I hope you've learned something. And see you again. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Spread the word. And see you. Bye.